Goers, you probably already know that not eating well, foregoing exercise, and lacking sleep worsens your mental state. But what about the less common factors? You might be surprised at how your simple thought patterns are detrimental to your mental well being. So let's dive right into it. Here are six tiny habits that destroy your mental health. Number one, frequently comparing yourself to others. How can I look more like them? Why can't I be more like them? Everyone has compared themselves to others. It may be a form of self-reflection and it helps you see which areas you'd like to improve on. But as much as these can be a source of motivation, it can also be quite detrimental to your mental health. It damages your sense of self. You're comparing yourself to inaccurate information and it doesn't actually help you achieve your goals. Most of the time, you're probably comparing yourself to people you see on social media, but content on the internet is curated to look that way. It doesn't necessarily mirror realistic standards. The act of constantly comparing yourself to others breeds envy, low self-confidence, and depression. So instead, try to focus your energy on what you have. Which parts of you do you love? Which do you not like as much? Identify these things and know that it's normal to be different. From there, you can slowly work on becoming a better you without pressure from others. Number two, keeping negative thoughts. The constant influx of news, information, and events can sometimes overwhelm your brain to the point of exhaustion. This feeling of stress is enhanced, especially if you're binge watching the news or reading a lot of negative reports. Are you constantly anxious? Do fearful thoughts keep you up at night? Those might be signs that you're keeping negative thoughts. Having a good mental state means being able to regulate your thought flow and emotions. So if you notice an instability, it might help to look for relaxing methods that suit you. Perhaps yoga, meditation, and regular breaks may help. Stay positive. Number three, not knowing how to say no. Do you experience difficulty saying no? Sometimes you don't notice you're trying too hard to please others. It may be at the expense of your own mental well-being. According to Dr. Vanessa Bonds, assistant professor at the University of Waterloo in Canada, saying no feels threatening to our relationships and that feeling of connectedness. You want to affirm to others that yes, you're a part of that relationship and yes, the relationship is still intact. But to what end? It's probably been ingrained in you that putting yourself first and saying no is bad, but saying no gives you an opportunity to rest, prioritize your own goals and set boundaries. So how do you do it? Try to thank them for approaching you, then decline them in a straightforward way. Short, honest, but respectful. Remember that it's not the end of the world and people will also get where you're coming from. After all, they're humans too. So don't worry, give yourself the time you deserve. Number four, blaming others all the time. Do you like to point fingers at others all the time? Blaming people is often easier than taking responsibility. It relieves you of consequences and saves you some bad hits on your reputation, but it won't improve your mental health. It can distract you from the constructive task of self-reflection. Spending your energy blaming others also doesn't do anything to contribute to the solution. Nothing gets done and your stress will pile up. Of course, not everything is your fault and it's important to recognize that, but it's also important to self-reflect on your own actions and take responsibility even when it may be a hard pill to swallow. Number five, keeping toxic relationships. Are you the type of person who gives second chances? Sometimes being too kind puts you in bad situations, and that may happen when you remain in relationships with toxic, manipulative people. These people are the type that force you into doing what they want, are inconsistent with their actions, and make you feel uncomfortable around them. Do you know someone with these traits? If you do, then it's much better to address these issues directly or put some distance between you and that person. Please remember that they're not your responsibility. You shouldn't feel bad for not being with them. Stay strong. Think about what's best for you instead of what's best for them. And number six, not asking for help. Do you frequently experience burnout? This may be an indicator that you're working too hard. Remember that asking for and accepting help is okay. You likely want to remain independent and do things on your own, but you're every bit as strong even if you ask for help along the way. It actually isn't easy to do because you'll probably end up wanting to do everything by yourself again, but it helps to remind yourself that there are always people willing to help. Try and shift your perspective. Just as how you're ready to help someone, someone is ready to lend you a hand too, and you deserve to take it. Can you relate to any of these habits? Which ones do you find yourself doing the most? 
If we missed anything, let us know in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, like and share it with friends that might find insight in this too. Remember to 